Hey, Chris here from Perma Systems. Just showing you right here um, our little permaculture food forest that we've converted from a small old conventional orchard. Now the key to any um, food bearing system and really the key to all life is healthy soil. And um, I wanna tell you a little bit how we've been building healthy soil here. Around here we have very heavy dense clay soil. There's a lot of round um, cobble old, uh, old river rocks um, around here. And in fact, this area is part of an ancient riverbed that uh, came through San Diego County here millions of years ago. But if we just look around a little bit, everywhere is this pretty uh, <coughs> tough soil. You can't really dig around in. And heavy clay soil can be hard on a lot of plants because um, it just doesn't drain well. And a lot of plants you know, don't wanna be sitting in wet soil all the time, which can cause um, root rot and other funguses to come in and take hold. The great thing about clay though, is it has a lot, it has a lot of amazing nutrients in it. And because it's so good at holding water, if you um, help improve the structure of the clay soil, such that it doesn't get over waterlogged for plants, but still um, helps hold a lot of water and helps um, move that water down through the soil, deep down into the water table, you can get some really um, happy, healthy plants. So I'll show you a little bit here. Um, the first thing we did to start building healthy soil is put down tons of mulch um, all over this orchard. And then we kind of did that, that was about three years ago. Uh, and then two years ago, we planted tons of daikon radishes. You can see some grown in here, they've gone to seed. That's these uh, little pointy seed pods there. But two years ago, we put tons of them in all around here. And what's awesome about daikon radishes is they just, their spears, um, they're, you know, the tubers shoot down into the ground and are really strong and help go down into that clay soil and open it up. Let water and nutrients be able to flow down it. So if you can see here, this is um, this, the old daikon radish root right here. And what's cool is this, um, now that it's rotted away, you can just kind of see this uh, fibrous exoskeleton. Um, the other part of it here was still down in the ground. I just kind of pulled this out but you can see it's just hollow inside and just creates this hole where when water rains down, um, you know, that water can get down into the soil. Um, so it's really great to start breaking up that soil. And then, now, um, last year and this year, um, we've been planting lots of nitrogen fixing plants. So the daikon started breaking up this clay soil. Then we've been planting things like uh, fava beans here um, they're a nitrogen fixing plant. And if we look down in here, some of our soil, we try to dig a little. It's uh, still not the easiest, but if you dig around, you can get down much, much more easily uh, than we used to be able. So you can see we're getting down. The browner soil is some of the native soil from here. But even if we get past the, just a little bit of mulch layer, it's just getting much easier to dig into that native soil. And I can tell already that it's much better at holding water and, I mean, all the plants are just so much happier. Um, they're just growing so much quicker and healthier. We have much less problems with pests. And what's really interesting about some of our nitrogen fixing plants, like the fava bean here, like our Palo Verde tree here, our overstory species, that these nitrogen fixing plants actually pull nitrogen from the atmosphere and store it down in their roots. And what's great about this is that there's lots of nitrogen um, on earth, but most of it is stored up in the atmosphere as gas and most plants aren't able to pull that out of the atmosphere. So what's cool is these nitrogen fixing plants have this relationship with um, a bacteria. The most common bacteria um, is called rhizobia bacteria that is 
that allows these plants to pull the nitrogen out of the atmosphere and store it down in their roots. So um, we also have these sweet peas growing around, another nitrogen fixing plant. And we even have some, you know, what people normally call weeds popping up and they're nitrogen fixing too. So like over here, this is a little patch of, some people call it sweet clover. So if we go to pull one up, let's see. Uh, it's tough to see on that one. Let me get another one. Yeah, you can see a few nitrogen fixing nodules on here. Let's see if I can get it to focus nice and close. Of course, it's not gonna want to. Let me see if I can find a bigger one. Ah, that's better. So let me, there you go, try to zoom in. So you can see those little white nodules on there. Those are the nitrogen fixing nodules from the rhizobia bacteria. Now, just the plant growing on its own here is not gonna release the nitrogen into the soil to make it available for other plants. What has to happen is um, like with an annual such as this, it needs to die. Now then once that dies, basically the nitrogen is stored in the plant, but once it's dead, it can start to decompose and become available for other plants. If we're talking about um, perennials, like this Tipuanu Tipu, or this Wahe, both nitrogen fixtures, what we need to do to make that nitrogen available for other plants is prune it. So this plant we could just what do what's called chop and drop, cut off some branches and just throw those branches down to the ground. You can mix them with the soil if you wanna speed up composition, but you can also just leave it on the surface and let it break down. Same like with this Wahe. But what's also neat is that these plants, um, just by losing their leaves, by being deciduous or semi-deciduous, or even, you know, even if they're evergreen and just losing some leaves every once in a while, they'll fall down to the ground, and all those leaves are also full of nitrogen. They'll fall down, break down, and start to become available for other plants. So we can see that this foundation for a healthy soil, for having a healthy food web, rich of life and diversity, um, one of the easiest ways to often start with that is to plant these nitrogen fixing plants, either as perennials um, or annuals, like our fava beans that are in here, like some of our clovers, like some of our sweet peas, and beans, all plants in the legume family. And so not only are we getting tons of food out of these, all these fava beans, tons and tons of food, but these plants are actually serving multiple functions. They're building healthy soil, they're giving us food, they're shading the ground. Um, all these awesome things we wanna do to help build a healthy food web for our plants, for our food, uh, food forest. And this healthy soil will just be so much better at holding on water, uh, holding on to water, keeping it available for plants, dramatically reducing our water, uh, <laughs> our water loss and making it so we don't have to do extra work, but we let nature do the work for us and produce food and down the road, hopefully produce abundance for us and all the creatures around here so the animals can eat some, we can eat some, and we can all be happy and healthy. So thanks for checking in and learning a little bit about our food forest conversion here, uh, a little bit about soil health and a little more about nitrogen fixing plants. Thanks.